So let's start on the 11th story, uh, Isaiah and, and Israel. Um, in, in, interested pair there to, at the title of the story, but in this lesson, you emphasize on how a, a, a group of people, Israel, seemed to be close to God, but their hearts were far away. Right? I know I've asked this in three different ways already, but like, why is it that um, our heart seemed to go away? Like, I could be here, but my heart is somewhere else. Like, um, why does it happen? Uh, like, it's almost a unfair question to ask you, but I'm going to ask anyway. Like, <laughs> Jer Jeremiah, that's fair enough. And Jeremiah gives us a real simple answer. The, the heart is deceitfully wicked above all things. Who can know it? Again, going back to that very first lesson, that's our fundamental nature. That's our default. Um, that's why the good news is that Jesus is our Savior, because Whoa. we're in constant need of His rescue, of His help. And this was a, a, a lesson, again, like the, na the last one, although Isaiah is an individual that's in a particular um, uh, personal situation as a prophet here, it really has national consequences. And this was a, this was a, a, a story that, that was close to Jody's heart. I'm going to let Jody comment yeah. on the, describing the overall well, arc here. Yeah, and, and to me it's just, just the, uh, that, that first chapter of Isaiah where, where it, you know, God is saying, you know, I want a relationship with you. You know, it's just a, you know, the ox knows his master, the, uh, you know, it, you know, it's just, you know, but my yeah. my people, they don't know me. They yeah. don't understand. Mm -hmm. You know, and so the people are going through the motions. They've got mm -hmm. religion. They've got, you know, we are God's chosen people. And they've got, they're going through all the motions. They're, they're even, you know, adding to the commandments. They're doing all these things that they think, mm -hmm. you know, but, but it's, it's all in the, the, uh, in the religion yes. and not in the relationship. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's God saying, you know, it's more than, the religion is important, you know, but it's also the relationship. Mm -hmm. And I want you to graduate from, from rules to a relationship. relationship. Right. And, and it's, it's just, you see the heart of God and just, just his, his crying out for Israel just to know, to right. know your, your Savior, to know, to know the Lord. And that's, that's, that's really the heart-rending part is just to see, you know, God wanting so, so much for Israel to have a relationship with him. I mean, to have it from their heart, like, the, uh, 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 like, and, and Christ, the, um, the, the rescue that he, he offers us today, is to really change your heart, because it's easy to do the um, appearance thing, right? To appease God, like all the other gods around were, were being, uh, I'm appeased, man, and, and Israel started to fall into the same sort of, of, of mode of, of appeasing God. We do that today, like, I, um, I appease God by showing up to prayer meeting. I appease God by showing up for church. I, I mean, all, all of this appeasing thing. What um, advice can you give to churches to, to change from the focus of all the uh, appeasing type actions to, um, um, to build into your programming or your, your, way, your ways of doing church uh, where you allow the Spirit of Christ to change your heart from being like a ple appeasing to pleasing. Right. Mm -hmm. And if you see with the, the um, you know, the pagan religions, they were into appeasing the gods. You know, that's, that's basically, you know, let's give God these sacrifices mm -hmm. and then uh, maybe, they'll leave, maybe these gods will leave <laughs> us alone. <laughs> you know, so, so that was the whole Jesus thing was, was not about a relationship with these mm -hmm. gods. It was how do we get these gods off our back? You know, and, and when you're in this mode of trying to appease God or bargain with God or, you know, uh, you're, you're not in a relationship. You're, you're in a, like a business contract or something. What do I have to do to, to, to get what I want, you know? And, and, and so the, the appeasement is, is really about trying to give God things mm -hmm. rather than give God yourself. Mm -hmm. And God is saying, I don't want the things. I want you. Mm -hmm. And it's not because God needs us. Mm -hmm. It's because that's what's best for us. You know, the, all this, this appeal that God is saying to Israel, it's not that the God has some sort of lack because Israel's not in his life. 
He, it's not he's, that he's wanting it for him. Right. He's wanting it for them. Mm -hmm. And that's what love does. Love wants the best for the other person. And he knows what's best for Israel is for them to come to him and find salvation. Otherwise, they're going to perish. And that's the same thing that God wants for each of us. It's interesting how worship itself, which is a good thing, right, mm -hmm. um, can be twisted in such a way that it becomes just a form in itself rather than a, than a, a reflection of the heart. It, it right. becomes almost a, a, a diversion. Mm -hmm. And because uh, I look at these verses about, you know, sacrifice, you're offering a sacrifice, we're just really describing this isn't so much a, an issue of, well, those are old covenant sacrifices. Mm -hmm. and I, This was just worship. This was how they worshiped. Um, I think we can do the very same thing uh, in our own churches. We can come in the door and we can go through the half hour of song service, give our prayer mm -hmm. request. We can go through the forms, mm -hmm. and yet our hearts are far from him, is what Isaiah will say later on. Mm -hmm. You honor me with your lips, but your heart is far from me. It seems to me that true worship, Jesus says to worship in spirit and truth, this true worship that really understands how God's spirit has been given to us so that we can be true uh, as he understands truth in, in every aspect of our life. It seems like true worship is really about cultivating the heart. Mm -hmm. It's about forming our desires. It's about forming our loves. Um, I. I love that my children, if you ask them, well, what's, the, what's your favorite day of the week? Well, Sabbath. Mm -hmm. Sabbath's their favorite day of the week. Sabbath is when we come together as, as a church and we spend the day together and we worship together. And, mm -hmm. and it's been the, the, the habit and, and, the, and those healthy rituals mm -hmm. that have formed their hearts to, to love God and love that time together, that sacred time. Um, but if, if our forms of worship don't get to the heart, mm -hmm. if they just become a veneer, mm -hmm. um, then our religion is in vain. Mm -hmm. And that's where David says in Psalms 51, uh, for thy desire is not sacrifice, else would I give it. He says the sacrifices of God are a broken a spirit, a broken and a contrite heart. Mm -hmm. In other words, the, the irony of it is, is that the sacrificial system itself bringing that gift of a lamb, mm -hmm. um, sharing that offering, mm -hmm. that was a symbol of the very loving gift of self to God. It's, mm -hmm. it's giving away myself. Uh, for Israel, they had lost it. They were going, get a lamb, we're going to the church. Because you know, that's what you're supposed to do is take a lamb. Mm -hmm. um, rather than recognizing that here is a very expression of God's love and giving of himself for us, and now mm -hmm. we are to reciprocate and give ourselves back as, as a gift of our lives to Him for the gift He's given us. So the sacrificial system itself was beautifully illustrated the kind of worship that is heart transforming. And yet over and over and over again through the prophets, we see that Israel, and I don't want to just pick on the Old Testament Israel because I think it can happen in our churches and does happen in our churches, mm -hmm. that, um, that we drift from God in our hearts, that we, that we have the words, we have the appearances, but the actual love from the heart has has gone cold and uh, and that's that's something that I think this this lesson seeks to address is that mm -hmm. rescue from hypocrisy mm -hmm. rescue from um, cold hearts mm -hmm. and restored to authenticity mm -hmm. and restored to um, God transforming our hearts right so the, um, so the answer man that I heard you kind of give is that is to have some form of activity that um, that it pulls you back to the focus sort of like it I, activity is the problem but activity then is also the solution it seems like right like but um, um, is it the, the duty then of, of, of leaders and speakers and, and preachers to um, to constantly remind people that why we're doing this activity sort of like if you ask my wife she she don't do praise and worship just to choose a song that sounds good yeah. ever right like it it has to remind us of of who jesus is and and what he has done for us on earth and what he will do for us right so um, is that the purposeful leadership in the way that we do church um yeah. And, and not just have church to have fun and do all the appeasing things because in the end we're um, appeasing ourselves it seems like right but 
it, it should be really the reminder and the purposeful planning that why I'm doing it as a leader, um, the, the reason why I'm planning this service, um, the, the reason why I interest the praise team, the reason why I interest the teachers, is so that this is a response to what God has done and, and, and seeking out His heart. Um, and I, I, I think I just answered my own question. Yeah. So you guys owe me like money or something. Yeah. <laughs> you know, part, of, yeah. part of Isaiah's <laughs> message, part of Isaiah's message too is, is, the, is really wanting to point out the, the dichotomy that had developed. While they seemed to have a powerful worship service going on, right. then they would walk out the door and they were cruel to right. the widow and the right. orphan. Yes. And the, there was a, the there was a problem right. between their worship and, yeah. and their justice right. um, that seeking the good of others. And I think that's also part of it is that when we come and as we worship, really worship is about getting our focus on God and His righteousness. Mm -hmm. And so when we walk out the door, if, if it's impacted our heart, then the natural consequence of that is that we're going to do justice. We're going to seek mercy. We're right, going exactly. to walk humbly with our God in every aspect of our life. Mm -hmm. If that's not happening, if we come and have a great time at church, it's probably because church has become <laughs> self-focused. Right. What am I going to get out of this? How, how yeah. am I going to get fed? <laughs> um, rather than, than seeing um, I'm here to devote my attention to my maker and right. worship him and receive from him the kind of life that he wants me to live. And so when we walk out the door, worship continues in our in the way we live our lives. So I am rescued from? Or um, is, is Israel is, is rescued yeah. from? Israel, Israel rescued from this this trying to give God things mm -hmm. and they're restored to, to giving God themselves. Uh -huh. Okay, and with that, let's go on to the next story, the next lesson. Thank you.